I'll have a lot of scripture this morning, but if, uh, my main scripture is found in 2 Corinthians 4, starting with verse 5, if you'd like to go there, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5. It's nice to see some familiar faces in the crowd today. I see some that have, I started to say come home to roost, but I don't know how I ought to say that. <laughs> we're glad that you're here. <clears throat> well, this week, if you, if you were here last week, you recall that I used these top two examples here <clears throat> as object lessons for my m message last week. And I've had those on my desk all week. I, I brought them from the sanctuary, but I only got as far as the office and and there they stayed all week long, but it served as a great reminder for me. Every time I came in the office, I looked at those two and I said, uh, there's me without God, there's me with God. He makes all the difference. And as I was thinking about clay this week, I, I kind of wanted to continue that theme, so that's what I'm going to do. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5 in the NIV says, We do not preach ourselves, this is Paul talking here, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. I like the way the message has it. Sometimes I like the message. A lot of times I like the message. I don't really trust it for serious study, but it really paraphrases this uh, verse quite well, I think. He says, remember our message is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Master. All we are His messengers, errand runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up the darkness, and our lives filled up with the light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. I like that paraphrase. Verse 7 will be our key verse for the day. We have this treasure in jars of clay. King James Version says, earthen vessels. To show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. First point, we have a treasure. Do you consider yourselves rich today? Probably many of you would say yes. Maybe not by the world standards as we studied in uh, Sunday school class today. World, the world standards, the world's riches don't satisfy. But if you're a Christian today, you have a treasure within you that is more valuable than anything this world has to offer. I brought some treasures with me today. I don't know if you'd call them treasures. They're antique coins, uh, silver dollars, most of them a hundred years old or so. And so these coins are going to represent the treasure. And I'm going to put a treasure in each one of these earthen vessels. I chose the heavy ones for impact, okay? <laughs> so, each of those earthen vessels has within it a treasure. And that's what those coins represent. But what is the treasure that this verse is talking about, that we have within us as believers? Verse 6 tells us that God said, let light shine out of darkness. He made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We have this precious treasure, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
He has made his light shine in our hearts. Light is made to shine. What good is light if you put it under a bushel? We as Christians are called to let the light shine that God has put within us. The message version calls it a precious message. The light of the gospel is a precious message. Messages are meant to be shared. Light is meant to shine. Messages are meant to be shared. The treasure of the gospel is meant to be shared with others. We have a treasure and we are called to share that treasure. Let's see how this treasure is described in Matthew 13, starting with verse 44. Matthew 13, 44, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. Sneaky, huh? He hid the treasure again, and then he sold all he had and went back and bought that field. He recognized the value of that treasure, so he sold his possessions. He came back and he bought that field. Again, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. This illustrates the value of this treasure that we possess. It's worth everything and more. And that's what the, the fellow in the story did. He sold everything that he had so that he could possess this precious treasure. And here we have it for free. Jesus paid the price, and he offers this gift to us. Paul came to the conclusion in Philippians chapter 3, Whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss. You see, these are accounting terms. And Paul moved what he thought was an asset, he moved it over into the liability, the debit column, and vice versa. Whatever I thought was to my profit, I now consider loss. You see, he had a lot to brag about. He was a religious person. He had kept the law to the letter. He had all the credentials, all the pedigree, and he thought all of that was valuable. But he came to a point in his life when he realized it wasn't. He moved all of that over into the debit column. For what? What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, garbage. King James says, dung, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. All the stuff that we were studying this morning in Sunday school class in the book of Ecclesiastes, all the things that this world searches after, strives after, tries to store up in big barns and then build bigger barns and all this accumulation, all of this materialism that has seemed so important in this world today, Paul came to a point in his life when he said it's all garbage. It's worthless. It's meaningless. It's nothing compared to knowing Christ. Nothing. Again, I like the way the message says it. The very credentials these people are waving around is something special. I'm tearing up and throwing it out with the trash, along with everything else I used to take credit for. Why? Because of Christ. Yes, all the things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master, firsthand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. He calls it dog dung. Maybe I should step out of the pulpit to say that. That's what he says. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ and be embraced by Him. That's a heavenly mindset. That's an eternal value system. We said in Sunday school class today, we better not hang our happiness on anything we can lose because we could lose it that quickly. This treasure the light of God in our hearts, the joy of knowing Jesus is so valuable that everything else is garbage by comparison. God has entrusted this treasure to us 
but not so we can hoard it or hang on to it selfishly. He's entrusted us with the gospel, the joy of knowing Jesus, the joy of sins forgiven, the hope of eternal life, so that we can freely share it with other people. Now, if I, if I shared those coins in the earthen vessels today, I'd eventually run out of coins. There's only five coins there. I could only share a coin with five people in this congregation. But I can share and share and share the gospel and never run out. And we've been called to do that. So we do have a treasure as believers. We have a treasure. We have it in jars of clay, earthen vessels. Why is that? You know, I, if you have jewelry or precious uh, possessions at home, you'd probably be in, inclined to put it in fancy jewelry box or some kind of cedar chest or something, you know, with a, with a lock on it. At, but you probably wouldn't put it in a clay pot. But they did in those days. You see, the, the uglier the pot, the more safe it was. Nobody would think to look in this ugly old flower pot, I'll put my treasure in there, and then maybe put a, a flower on top of it. Isaiah 64, 8 says, we're the clay, you're the potter, we're all the work of your hand. So God has chosen to put this priceless treasure into us, jars of clay, mortal, flesh and bone. The jar represents us, our human body. The jar is not the treasure. What has been put inside the jar is the treasure. The believer is simply a jar of clay. It's the treasure within the vessel that gives the vessel its value. Have you ever wished you were more like someone else? Have you ever wished you had someone else's talent, someone else's money, someone else's looks. God has made us the way we are so that we can do the work that He wants us to do. We are specifically made by Him, a unique creature. We should not complain to God about our lack of gifts or abilities or our limitations or handicaps. Psalm 139, 13 says, You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully.